welcome to Tune In Tuesday at 2. Anyways, the two things I wanted to talk about. One is I wanted to give you a quick preview of something that literally just launched. It's my five-day free workshop called Collage Kickstart. So I'm going to talk about it for just a minute or two. And then I'm going to give you an art demo uh, showing you how to do what I consider the coolest paper I've made yet for the 100-day project. Pam, my goodness. Hello, my friend. Love having you here. So let me start with Collage Kickstart. So as many of you know, I'm in the process of creating an intensive six week workshop, which is called Collage Joy. And I thought, you know, while I'm in the process of doing that, why don't I show you, kind of like let you behind the scenes to see what this big thing is by giving you a sneak peek into it, which is called Collage Kickstart. So starting today, as in like an hour ago, I, you can actually take a free five day workshop on collage with me. It's recorded online and the links, you can go to my link in my profile and let me tell you what it's about. So the whole collage joy workshop is six weeks. It's very intensive. It's soup to nuts. Everything I know about collage, the collage kickstart, the five day is really, you can think of it as the first five days of collage joy. So you're getting the first five days for free as kind of like a taster to see if this is something that interests you. I mean, you're not obligated at all to do anything past that, but it is a really nice entry point. It actually does. In fact, the people that eventually sign up for Collage Joy, I'm going to suggest they take Collage Kickstart because it gives you some skills that are not going to be repeated in Collage Joy. <clears throat> so the process for Collage Kickstart, the freebie, is that I first start with talking about how to select a limited palette and then make a whole series of collage papers with a limited palette that all matches. So you're gonna make seven different collage papers, some of my absolute favorites. A couple of them I've actually demoed here, um, but a lot of them I haven't. So you get seven collage papers all in the same color family. So they all go together. So then, that, and that is on days two, three, and four, you make collage papers. Then on day five, you bring it all together. Let me show you what you're gonna make. So this, you're gonna make a collage grid. And this is made with a cohesive grouping of collage papers that I made in, as part of filming uh, this workshop. So if you have papers that all go together in different values, light, medium, and dark, it makes it so easy to make the collages. And then during the process, I also give you really simple guidelines of how do you make collages that are really balanced and that they are, <clears throat> sorry, my throat's going up. They all work together. So, and I'm, we're going small. And then when we get to collage joy, we progressively get bigger and bigger. So you use the same concepts um, to make bigger collages using kind of fundamental design elements, at least my design elements and how I make collages. So if you're interested, this is free right now. I sound like an infomercial, but you just go to the link in my profile and uh, it'll the very first link is to Collage Kickstart and you can sign up right now. <clears throat> and you would actually get one workshop a day. So if you sign up today, you'd get one today and then one for the next four days, you'll get one workshop, you know, one lesson a day until it's done. And then Collage Joy, which is the continuation of Collage Kickstart. Well, we sometime, I'm hoping July, we'll see. Um, I'm heavy in, <laughs> heavily into making it right now. Okay, so that's Collage Kickstart. Now, I'm, I'm so glad you think it sounds incredible. By the way, I had the best time doing it. And if you think you can get, you know, when I did these collages that I just showed you, they're so addictive, I couldn't stop. I just kept going. I, I have like 24 of them. I couldn't stop because it's really, really fun. Anyways, so let me go on to the demo. So I want to share with you probably the easiest paper I've ever made. And it's also, I think, one of the most beautiful. It's, it's my favorite of all the ones I've made for, uh, for the 100-day project. 
and I'm going to keep making them. <laughs> so what I make with you right now is going to go is go into my stash for what I'm going to be using for Collage Joy. More than likely, I'll add it to the Collage Joy workshop. So let me turn my camera around. Okay. So there's my setup right here. Let me just get you, get you, or get the camera <laughs> set up real quick. Okay. Let's see if I can get this right. Here we go. Okay. So this is the paper. And it is made with shaving cream. Now, the funny thing is, is that I was taught this technique a number of years ago by another, another artist. And what she taught us to do really gave me different results than what I figured out to do. So I'm going to show you what I discovered. Now, what you're seeing here is done with a limited palette. And it's exactly what I'm going to be teaching in Collage Kickstart because it makes it so much easier when you limit the colors that you make your collage papers from. Now, the, pa the colors that I am choosing for my palette for both Collage Kickstart as well as Collage Joy is this. Now, by the way, I'm not suggesting at all that you choose my colors, but I'm doing Phalo Deep Blue, Green Shade, and I'm using Hansa Yellow. And that's what all of the papers I'm about to show you were made with. So let me take you through the pro Oh, by the way, let me show you. So this is the first one I made, which I just fell in love with. And the more you make with the same, um, with the same shaving cream, because we're going to lay down one layer of shaving cream and then keep making papers over and over from that one shaving cream, um, they get a little darker and darker. So this is on music paper. It gets a little darker. This one is a little darker. And then it gets really intense. But I think it's still gorgeous. It's just that we keep adding more and more paint and it changes it. So the first thing we want to do, hold on a second. Okay, here we go. I almost lost something. Is I want to, I want to just mix a tiny bit of paint because we need that um, already set up. So I'm going to put a little bit of paint on my palette, a little bit of my phalo blue and a little bit of my Hansa yellow. As you can see, I actually played a little bit before we started. Uh, just to, I, I just can't, it's kind of hard to not play when it's all sitting here. Uh, and by the way, I'm also going to use a little bit of white too, because the white just will help me add a little bit of different values to this. So we're going to start, I'm just going to take a little bit of this I'm really in love with that color right there. So I want to get more of that color. If I add a little white to it. So it just makes it a, a, a teal. And I want to get a little lighter. Okay. And I think I'm going to add a little more, a little more over here too. I'm hoping this will work. I mean, I know it'll work. It's a matter of how much paint I need to make it work. Because I want a little bit of variety in my colors here. So those are the colors I'm going to use. Now, what I'm going to do with this is I have a baking sheet here. This reminds me of last week's demo when I um, demoed rust. I actually rusted three different um, pans like this in order to show <laughs> rusting. But so make sure you shake it up <laughs> and you want to get a nice layer of this stuff. Okay, then this is an essential item, bathroom squeegee. So I want to kind of just spread this out so I've got a nice layer of it. I really need, a, I need you know, as I was doing this, I realized I need a smaller bathroom squeegee. Although I do have, um, I've forgotten what you call them now, um, scrapers. They're not called scrapers. <laughs> oh, I'm going to pull them out in a second. I'm sure someone knows the technical artistic term for this, but someone would just, it's like, you know, spreading out cake batter, I guess, that's, or cookie dough, except it's really loose. By the way, this smells, it's very, very sweet smelling. And I actually did, I tried this out for the first time in a long time. I, I mean, I have done this before, but I wanted to give it a go again to see if this is something I actually wanted to use in my workshops. 
And of course I fell in love with it. But then on Saturday, after I started doing this, I kind of got sick of the smell. So now I want to go find, cause this is a real, you know, it's, it's shaving cream with a real heavy scent. So I want to go see if I can get some unscented because my studio, even though I, I threw out um, all the extra shaving cream, it uh, kind of permeated my entire studio. So now that's all I can smell. And now I'm putting more of this in my studio. So I guess I'm, I'm just not a, a, a perfume kind of person. And this is pretty heavy. Anyways, it's worth it for art, right? So this is what you do. It's very technical. So I got my little colors here. And I'm going to start, I'm just going to dab paint. In fact, I think I'm going to use my, ooh, oh, oh, that was great. <laughs> okay, well, that was meant to happen, right? <laughs> that, was, that was too funny. So I'm just going to drop, you really can't make a mistake here. I'm just going to drop um, some of these colors just randomly about. Now, when I first saw this um, actually demoed, uh, or actually I did it in a workshop years and years ago, um, the artist actually had fluid paints and we just dropped all different kinds of random colors all over the place. And the thing I didn't like about that, I'm just going to get a little more light colors in here. I didn't like about it is that it created mud really quick because we weren't really conscious of the colors we were putting down. We were just randomly putting them down. But if you very consciously select what colors you want, you get a much, um, I think you get more beautiful papers because they all go together. And to me, they're more usable because I'm going to add a little bit of yellow just for fun. Add a little, let's see what we get. Now, I probably don't need this much paint. Now, the other part of this is you use the end of your paintbrush <clears throat> and I'm counting on this working. <laughs> and you just kind of swirled around kind of randomly there's no kind of anybody can do this actually I really like that blue all by itself that is really beautiful and I'm trying to connect these a bit you know I want I want this to all look like it was part of the same design just you know my heart is racing really fast as I do this <clears throat> because I don't know why. I just think this is like intensely gorgeous. Whew. <clears throat> okay. I probably, I don't know, I'm thinking maybe I want a little more of the blue we're like right in there Add a little more color <clears throat> yeah okay this is it so this is the moment of truth <clears throat> so i am just going to take a piece of this is just a uh, regular old drawing paper nothing special about it and i'm just going to lay it down here just kind of pat it down so the So there's, I mean, I'm not doing anything special. I'm just, I'm not pushing it down. So if you can see the, 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 uh, the uh, foam here is still quite high. I just want to make sure that it, the paper is touching it. Now, here's the magic part. You pull this up. <clears throat> okay. Now here, here's our mess. Now what you do... I have a clean bathroom squeegee. This is actually out of my real bat, my own bathroom. And you literally wipe away the shaving cream. There's my shaving cream. And there is my gorgeous design. Is that, I mean, I just love that. I more than love it. I'm like completely gaga over this. So, and what I was told by this artist years ago was because I'm using... I'm using acrylic paints, our archival acrylic paints. This is archival now. I don't know about, about this uh, shaving cream business, but she told me this is archival. Now, I've got all this goodness on my thing. I don't want to waste it. So I started experimenting with, let me just see if, what I can do. 
by kind of spreading it. Oh, look, so I get all, I get all kind of papers this way. Of course, I'm messing up my workspace terribly, but I can use, what I'm going to be doing is using layer after layer. So I'll show you what I did. This is one I did the other day. Now I could use this paper just like it is. It has all, has like five, I don't know, 10 different layers on this, but I could also do one of these mosaics right on top of it too. This could be actually the base layer. So I'm going to keep using this one and I'll keep adding. Let's see if I can get some of the shaving cream off of here. Now, now we still have this, which is totally usable. So give me two secs because I'm going to actually just dump off this shaving cream because what's on the brush, I have to get rid of. Okay. So let's, let's do this again. So where's my palette? Okay, here it is. Now I am going to have to um, pour out just a tiny bit more paint because I used, I think what I'm going to do though, let me just do this. I love an intense blue so much. I think I'm just going to dump some. Well, this, this, is the, this is the easiest way of doing it. This is how I did it the other day. Like why mix colors when you can just dump paint? And let's see, where else do I want it? And I think I'm also going to take some of this yellow, do the same thing. Because the when I add this yellow to the blue, in fact, I'm going to put it really next, real near the blue, it creates a teal, potentially. Now, it may just give me a swirl, which is fine, too. So if you can look at all the white that's still left over here. So wherever there's white, I'm going to get a print that has a lot of white in it like this. So there's a lot of white in this print. But the more times I do this, like I can do this six times on this one thing. I can go six, six different layers and still have um, usable shaving cream to make prints with. The more times I do it, the darker it gets because I'm filling in all of that white. I think I'm going to get rid of my hair. Okay, here we go. I don't know about you, but it just, just feels like magic. Mm -hmm. See, even all this, like, kind of this stuff that looked like it was all messed up, it's not messed up when I swirl it around again. Because even this paint can be revived just by doing a few swirls. So, my color palette that I've chosen to use for all of Collage Kickstart and Collage Joy is just these two colors. So I'm using Hansa Yellow and uh, Philo, Philo Blue Green shade. And that means that all the papers I make, I just think, oh my God, it's so pretty. Um, they'll all go together. You know, so when I start making collages with them, actually, let's try something different. This is actually a piece of dictionary. So I'm going to put um, a, whatever this is. A dictionary piece on here. Do the same thing. Okay. I think we got good adhes adhesion. That's what you call this thing. To me, this is just like a miracle. So you pull this up, and it looks like a complete mess. Like, oh, let's see if that works. I mean, you know, I, I always think, no, that's not going to work. But it always does. So you got a lot of white space here, which is going to be cool. So here we go. Oh, my gosh. Now, there's a little bit of mess right here that I don't like. But this is gorgeous, and this is gorgeous. So I would never use this collage paper in its entirety. I would – let me see if I can get a little more off. No, it's not going to go off. Um, but the, these two edges actually were actually gorgeous. I came in here late. Any particular kind of shaving cream? Uh, good question. This is the cheapest shaving cream I could find at the grocery store. It's called Gillette. And again, I'm going to be shopping for something that doesn't have a scent to it. Because um, I can handle it for so long. And then it's like, ooh, that's too much. Actually, let me pull this piece of paper out again. So I want to keep layering this yummy goodness on here. Because I'll keep getting... I mean, look at that. that is just, you just get art out of the leftovers. I just think that's gorgeous. I'm like, why waste 
good paint and shaving cream, right? I mean, that's that's pretty pretty attractive there. Now I've got a bunch of stuff on my um, on my belt blade here, so give me a sec. I'm gonna just like just so you know, I am putting this into a bucket a couple of maybe three or four weeks ago. I demoed how to um, how to get rid of your paint in a environmentally sound way. So I have a bucket right next to me that I put all the extras in. Okay, so you know we actually have a really good design already going here, but I think what I want to do is add more of this teal color just to add some interest to this whole thing. So I'm going to add some more phthalo blue. Of course, I'm probably adding too much. I'm pretty addicted to this. Um, I'm addicted to this color combination. And then I'm going to really, I only need a little bit of that yellow to get the color I want. And I really want a lighter color. I probably just blew it with too much. Um, well, I'll just put more blue in. And then I've got some white. So this works on, I'm actually using heavy body paint, but I just scored it out. Um, this is fluid white. So really, I mean, and I, and I actually learned this for the first time with um, fluid acrylic. And I think it works just as well, just with the plain old acrylics. So let's just add some of this new teal in some blobs. Now I'm really gonna start filling in the white now because there's hardly, wherever you see white is where we're gonna have, you know, obviously white on the, um, I'm gonna put it where the yellow is, wherever it's gonna be a white on the print. I don't know why, this has just literally become my favorite, favorite way to make papers. Um, I mean, I like a lot of papers. I like the, my glue resist is a big favorite. And that's actually one of the ones I teach in collage kickstart. So basically I'm just fixing the design, you know, even though it's, it looks like it's messed up when I pull that sheet up, pull up, you know, pull up the print. <clears throat> when I start swirling it, I've got gorgeousness again. And the colors just keep swirling together. But again, when I learned this originally, um, because we weren't really conscious of what colors we were putting down, we were just kind of randomly putting down uh, what <laughs> what we liked, you know, from the the from the selection that they had given us, which was limited. Um, I'll put this print down. Uh, we got mud, so I would get two prints. I'm on my third right now, so I can make six. Uh, and still probably have more to go after that. But six is what I've done twice now. Let's see what we get with this one. I mean, each time I think, oh, no. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> there can be nothing out of this. But each time something magical happens. So here we go. Yeah, that's cool. That's gorgeous. Look at that. I mean, that is pretty spectacular. So just so you know, I am going to stop here because, well, let me, let me use, I got this nice, a little bit of a different color variation. So let me just add this while we're here. Yeah, so that, I mean, look at that. I mean, I'm sorry, but that's just like one of the simplest things. Po oh my. And this is just from scrap from scrap. Why don't we just do that one too, too? Okay. I'm pretty much in love. I mean, I like that. I like the other ones better, but I think it's pretty cool. So let me just, uh, anybody had any questions? Do you have any questions? Reminding me of Van Gogh using these colors. Yeah, that's true. I'm going to turn this around so I, you can see me. Hi. Any questions? Just drawing paper, she said. Nothing special. Yeah, I'm, I'm using everything. I used rice paper. I used drawing paper. I tried it on copy paper. Works great on copy paper. Um, I do a lot of book, uh, a lot of book images. So I, I pull out all my extra uh, book things. Um, and I was actually thinking, like this one I showed you, this is, thanks, see if it's in the light. This is the one that was a um, 
my, like, it's like this one. It was my scrap one. If I fucking see, yeah. I can't do this on the phone really well. Anyways, this is my scrap. I was thinking about actually doing the process, you know, putting, even though it's a, you know, it's a full thing of paint, actually add one of these um, mosaics to it to see what that would look like. Any other questions? I love this so much too, by the way. So I have to tell you, it's going to be hard for me to stop doing it. But you did this in school, only folding the paper in half and pressing it together. Hmm. So you put, so tell me, is this Tammy, art girl? Is that you? I don't recognize the numbers. Um, you actually put the, the uh, shaving cream off the entire thing and then fold it in half with the paint on it? That would be an interesting thing. I may try that right now. I came in light. So I don't see any other questions. So anyways... Thank you to all of you for hanging out with me. And again, if you're interested in learning collage or getting a, a free kind of taster of what I am intending to teach in my longer workshop, it's free. Five days of collage instruction. And really, it's my first, you can consider it the first five days of collage joy. Uh, I'm just kind of segmenting it out to let people kind of get a peek at what I'm up to. So anyways, thank you all for coming every week. Many of you, I know you're always here, whether you're listening to this on the recording or you're here with me right now. Um, I really am grateful that you give me some of your time to let me share what I'm excited about. And that's it. So I hope you all have a fabulous, wonderful, blessed day and week. And I will see you next Tuesday at 2 p.m. Eastern. Bye everyone.